Let us uh, picture the, this situation. The human being in consequence of childhood traumas, of other traumas, which are still repeating and replicating themselves, is leading a life disconnected from his feelings or intuition. Yeah. Maybe he or she knows that something is wrong, yeah. but the relationships he has, the work, hobbies and other bindings, are already established, mm -hmm. not only from a free will or from dignity, but also from maybe some minor needs, mm -hmm. from some fears or desires which were urging somewhere in the past. How can be such a pre-existing system transformed without uh, being destroyed? Hmm. Maybe it's a difficult question. It's a, it's a very deep question. Um, So these patterns, these uh, disconnections, these ways of being in relationship, they don't represent who the person really is. Underneath them, there's a person with the capacity to connect to themselves and to be free in the world and be authentic in their relationships with other people. That, that's there. So there's no need to fear that if these personality patterns are, as you say, destroyed or broken or let go of, that there's going to be chaos. Because underneath it, there's the real person. So as the, if you think of the personality as kind of the shell of an egg, you know, as the shell begins to break, the real, the real person can emerge. So the outcome can be very good. Now, sometimes that doesn't happen. Sometimes when the shell breaks, there's real chaos and mental suffering. But that's because the right help is not available. If the right help is available, then that breaking of that shell can just lead to freedom and the emergence of the of the true self. So it depends on the degree of support and understanding that, uh, that a person can receive. Thank you. I, I thought about this situation also uh, in the context that uh, somehow the person is feeling that he's or she is not happy with mm -hmm. their relationships. Mm -hmm. But uh, if it's enough uh, true to himself or herself, she, uh, they know that the relationship are not uh, the thing to be blamed. That's right. I understand that maybe sometimes uh, to broke some relationship may be the most easy way, but I don't know if it, this is the most right way to, to transform. So the unhappiness is always a sign of disconnection. But from who and from what? So, the, the unha as you suggest, the unhappiness is always a sign of disconnection from the self. Even if it shows up in a relationship, who's the one choosing that relationship? And who's the one staying in that relationship? And who's the one that continues the patterns in that relationship? Well, that's me. So, ultimately, the problem is not the relationship. The problem is my disconnect from myself. So, in a good relationship, you can work it out. Each partner, each person can become themselves and still stay connected to their partner. In a relationship that doesn't leave room for that, then once I connect for myself, I have to leave. But the issue is not the relationship, the issue is always myself. I don't know how many time we have, only 15 minutes for the whole interview, but I would certainly like to ask the question about the so-called schizophrenia. This is a disease and, uh, yeah. and I and many of my colleagues from Studio 27, yeah. we were diagnosed with such a disease, yeah. but also uh, we sometimes doubt if it is right or not, and mm. I wanted to Mm -hmm. find in your public uh, lectures or in your books uh, such a concept? In my, uh, in my new book I talk about it. Yeah? 
Yeah, it's going to be coming out in September. I've been thinking about these questions for a long time. And uh, the more I learn, the less I believe in these diagnoses. So these diagnoses, they're just words. They don't explain anything. They might describe something. Like the person diagnosed with schizophrenia might have delusions. They might have trouble thinking symbolically. Um, they might have fears. But that doesn't explain anything. It doesn't explain why they have fears. It doesn't explain why they have perhaps delusions, you know? So I think that even the idea of mental illness, that's only one way of thinking about it. What if it's not an illness? What if it's a response to life? What if it has some meaning? So, for example, schizophrenia, let's look at what the word means. It's, it means split mind, right? That's what it means. Mm -hmm. Schizo, split, frame, mind. Split mind. Well, why would somebody split their mind? We could say because they have a disease. But that doesn't explain anything. Why do they have the disease? How do, they, how do we know they have this disease? Because their mind is split. Why is their mind split? Because they have this disease. How do we know that they have a disease? Because their mind is split. It doesn't explain anything. It just goes round and round and round. But if you look at a person's life, I'm mean, giving you my personal opinion. Maybe you don't agree, maybe you agree, but if you look at a person's life, what if they're a very sensitive person? What if sensitivity is their nature? Which is the nature of everybody with the diagnosis I've ever met. Supremely sensitive. And what if they suffered a lot? And what if the suffering was too much? So what if the splitting of the mind is actually a way of getting away from the suffering? So it's not an illness, it's a response to life. That's the first point. The second point is, do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. Okay. Um, the second point is, when I look at not the narrative content of what a person believes, but the emotional meaning of it. To me, it always makes sense. So for example, somebody might believe, this is an extreme example, but, but somebody might believe that people from Mars are trying to control them and hurt them, okay? Well, that can't be true because we know that there are no people on Mars. But what if the emotional reality is real? What if when they were small and helpless, there were powerful people who controlled them and hurt them? And what if it's too painful to recognize that? What if it's too painful to confront these people or to even to admit to yourself that these people that were powerful, they actually hurt you when you were small? then one way to protect yourself is to develop a belief. So you have this fear of control, mm -hmm. and you have this pain, which makes sense. And then, but one way of protecting yourself from the pain of it is that your mind, not that you deliberately, nobody does this deliberately, but what if their mind then makes up a story, oh, I'm being controlled by powerful people from Mars. Now my fears and my pain make sense. So there's a lots of research that the more childhood suffering there is, the greater the risk of psychosis. Lots of research for that. And there's one British psychologist, very famous British psychologist, who said that the link between um, childhood adversity, childhood trauma, and mental illness and psychosis is as strong as the link between cigarette smoking and cancer. Trouble is, you go to a psychiatrist, they just think there's something wrong with your brain. Yeah. They don't ask you what happened to you. They don't talk to you about that. And they just want to suppress the symptoms with medications.
which sometimes may be useful for a short period of time, but in the long term, there's so many problems with them. I hope that answers your question. Yeah, thank you. And does it make sense to you? Does it make sense? Uh, okay, also, good. I think that uh, when the uh, emotions are suppressed, yes. uh, there is uh, no real chance of uh, any recovery. It's just, as you said, maybe for the time being. Well, there is a chance, but you have to have help. Yeah. You have to have somebody who will listen to you and help you understand yourself. So, yeah. Okay. And it's also, um, there was actually an article in the New York Times just three days ago about a woman who hears voices, but instead of suppressing them with medications, she just listens to them. Yeah. You know, I know there's a whole movement. Yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah. And there was an article in the New York Times just in the last three days. You know, the doctors wanted to give her pills. She said no. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Maybe we are um, out of time, so thank well, you very much. You're welcome. Yes. If you have another question, you're welcome to ask it. But it's okay. If you want to finish, mm -hmm. it's okay. I was asked to finish this interview after 15 minutes. Okay. All right. And people are so you're being... eager to speak to you. So okay. Thank you very much. Well, thank you. It's a pleasure to speak with you. Okay. Take care. Thank you. My new book is titled The Myth of Normal. We have this belief that there's the sick people over here and the healthy people over here split. Yeah. There's the normal, then there's the abnormal. Actually, it's a spectrum, it's a continuum. You know, everybody's got some issues. Some people who have suffered more or are more sensitive, the more sensitive you are, the more you suffer. It'll be more extreme. But they're not different from the rest of us. You know, it, it, it's, it's all a continuum. Everybody, to some extent, dissociates sometimes, you know? Now, some people dissociate more. Why do they dissociate? Because they've had more pain. Yeah. And maybe they're more sensitive, so they feel the pain more. You know, but this whole idea that there's the normal and the abnormal, uh, that itself is... It's not the way it is. It's not? It's not the way it is. That's yeah. not reality. Yeah. Okay, that's just the way that people try to feel good about themselves by thinking that I'm normal and, <laughs> you know. It's a and, 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 yeah, not only that, the people who are diagnosed with what they call mental illness, I've had so many conversations, they have so much clearer vision, they have such insight about the world, about humanity, about um, society, that sometimes I just sit there and I just, I'm amazed when I listen to people like that. We should listen a lot more. As a society, the people that we call are crazy, they have a lot to say that is much more sane than, than we realize. That, that's what I wanted to say. <laughs>